Hey there, this is Scott with Stain Foo. And one of the biggest concerns that we hear from our customers is removing odors. Now, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to 100% every time get rid of odors. And it's not really that difficult once you have three things in your toolbox. Number one, you need the knowledge. So we're gonna show you the knowledge on how to get rid of this stuff. Number two, you need to have the right tools. Today we're gonna to show you the right tool. And number three, you need the right technique. So all three of those things will be addressed in this video today so that you can 100% get rid of odors every single time. All right, it sounds impossible, but it's not. And once you learn the principles here that I'm going to show you next, you too will get rid of odors all the time. We're gonna specifically dwell on urine odors for this particular video, but it applies to any odors. It's not just urine that's an issue, although if you have pets, chances are somewhere you have odors or have had odors. And if you are going to get a pet, you will have odors. All right, so let's get to it. Without further ado, I'm going to start. All righty, so the reason I'm doing this video is because I want you to be successful with urine removal. As I mentioned in the intro, urine is everywhere. It quite literally is. If you have pets in your home, there's, there's a high possibility and more like a probability that there is some urine. Pets are really good at hiding urine, okay? They don't want you to know it's there. Sometimes they do it for marking purposes or elimination because they haven't had a chance to go out or they're excited. They had a sickness. There's just all kinds of reasons. You might smell it. You might not. You might see it. You might not. But it's probably there if you have a pet. It becomes a problem when you can see it and especially smell it. So we're gonna be talking about how to get rid of odors today. And so let's get right to it, all right? First, I'm gonna do a little bit of math. This is about two milliliters, okay? And two milliliters represents how much urine a dog holds per kilogram within an hour. All right, so two milligrams of urine per kilogram per hour is approximately how much urine is generated in a, in a dog, okay? Let's use 20 kilograms as a dog size. So that's about 44 pounds. So 20 kilograms of body weight times that two milliliters comes out to 40 milliliters in one hour. So a 44 pound dog 20, mil, 20 kilogram dog, 44 pounds, will eliminate or hold and eliminate about 40 milliliters of urine every hour, okay? Now, if we extrapolate that over 24 hours, we come up with 960 milliliters of urine. So your 44 pound dog in 24 hours is eliminating this much urine. Now, hopefully that's not all into your carpeting We've seen some that, that were, but if it's just a couple of times a day, once or twice, then your success level is going to go up significantly, as I'm about to show you. If it's been a lot, you may have to address some other things that we'll get to in just a moment, all right? So with that out of the way, we're going to look at a sample carpet that I have here. And what I've done ahead of time is I've taken 80 milliliters, that's two of these, so imagine your 44 pound dog went twice on the carpeting right here in the center. And as I poured it in, it had a tendency to, to spread out. That's the way that, that physics works, is that wet seeks dry, okay? So as that spread out this way, it also gets wider underneath it as I'm gonna show you next. Before I do that, your carpet has two backings, all right? If you look on the side here, it's really tough to see, but you have two backings there. This one here that you can see from the back is called the secondary backing. This one here on the top side is called the primary. All these fiber bundles are glued together into this grid system that looks similar to this, into this primary backing, then the secondary backing is glued to that primary backing. This creates dimensional stability. All right, so you have two backings. You have the carpet fibers themselves. The urine, the 80 milliliters has gone through here. It's now, I can feel it, I can't really see it, but I can feel that it's into the pad. 
All right, so, and now it's about this big, so that little spot has started to spread and spread. Wet is seeking dry. And I look underneath the carpet pad itself and I expose the subfloor. Now, generally, your subfloor is going to be made of wood or concrete. This is cardboard just because it shows up a lot easier. But just imagine that that's wood or concrete, which is most subfloors out there. That urine has gone all the way through the two, the fibers themselves, the two carpet backings, the pad itself, and now has wound up into your subfloor. All right. One thing to keep in mind is that in order to remove odors, you have to remove the source. This is considered a source. All these contamination layers are considered a source. Not just the top where you can see it or smell it, but all these layers have a source. That's a source of urine. That whole source has to be overcome with a spotting solution with our spotter called Stain Foo. All right, so a lot of people just, you know, kind of spritz it on there and they say, okay, that's cool, that's enough. Uh, I think that's about it. Yeah, okay. I might rub it in a little bit, you know, feel good. Okay, it feels pretty damp. And then I'm done. They walk away and then they notice that, hey, maybe the yellow is gone and it smells better, but it's still kind of there. That odor is still there. And the reason why, as I just showed, all these sources are still contaminated. All right, so what I have to do is use enough stain foo to overcome, overcome that that liquid, that urine that has gone through the carpet backings, through the pad and into the subfloor. And what I would do is spray it down pretty heavily, liberally like this, and I would step on it. I'm not gonna step on it, because that's cardboard under there, it's gonna squish it. But I would step on it and move that, that decontaminant, that stained food downwards through the, the two backings, through the pad itself. And I can already feel it's damp here, so I did put enough on there at least to get through this. And then finally into the subfloor. I didn't put enough to get into the subfloor, but I could and I should. All right. And then if it's really bad, okay, this is going to take care of most of your odors right here just by doing what I did. Take some towels, blot it up, get that excess out. Wait, first of all, wait about five minutes because it takes a little bit of time for stain food to break down the, the, the chemistry of that urine. Okay. Blot it up with white towels. All right, just from the top side. You don't need to tear all this apart unless it's really bad. And I, at the beginning of the video, I did say if it's really bad, you should take additional measures. So let's get to that point. If it's really bad, let's say that your poor pooch has gone, I don't know, let's say every hour for the past 24 hours and he's 44 pounds and he's giving you the full 960 you know, approximate uh, milliliters of urine and this area is just soaking wet with urine, okay? And it's spread out. It might even be double, triple the size of this. If that's the case, you need to take extreme measures to get that contamination out and to spray on stain food by itself would waste your, it would actually waste product and waste your time. If it's this bad, you should either call a pro or extract it out with a machine. And you're just gonna use water with your carpet machine and four ounces of stain foo. Put that right into your water tank, your rinse tank, and clean it thoroughly, trying to get enough moisture down to at least penetrate into the, you don't want to soak it to the point that it's, you know, squish, squish, but to the point that it's starting to get into that, that padding. Because as you can see, there's not that much that comes through there with even 80 ounces. Some will come through. The majority of this 960 is not going to be, you know, it might be concentrated in the areas that the dog went but it's not gonna be terrible. It should not be terrible unless it's been going there time and time again for the course of weeks or years. All right, so clean it with your regular carpet machine and four ounces of stain foo mixed in. Let it dry thoroughly, take a sniff, see what happens. If it's still there, you know, sniff, sniff, sniff. Oh, I smell some here and here. Then just take stain foo, put it on your jet setting, okay? and drive that down there. See how I'm able to drive it? Let's say it's these two areas are the worst, okay? I'm gonna drive it down and now I'm gonna step on it, push it way down there. So let's just imagine that I'm stepping on it. I'm getting it through that, that pad, getting it through the two layers of backings. I'm gonna get it through that pad and eventually it's gonna show up under the subfloor, 
okay? And we might have to do it again in a couple of times just to make sure that we overcome that level of contamination that's underneath there because without that, without overcoming it, if you don't put enough product on there to get it all out, that source is still considered a source and has not been de decontaminated, all right? So continue to push, push, step on it. I'm about 200 pounds, so if I stepped on that, it would not only crush the cardboard, but it definitely would go through, all right? Now you can see that it's starting to go through. That's a stained foo, and it's starting to penetrate and break down that urine that's there, okay? And if it's, if it's really, really bad, you may consider putting a saran wrap over top of this overnight just to keep that, contamin that decontaminant, stained foo decontaminant on there so that it continues to do its work because the stain food will actually get wider too, all right? I'm not soaking this, this pad all the way, you know, to the degree that the contamination is, but those highly refined areas where the urine is really concentrated, it's going to start spreading out. This decontaminant is going to spread out, okay? All right, so finally, the last step, and this works with most levels of decontamination, whether it's just barely there or really, really bad, if this whole area is damp, it's a good idea to stack up white towels and weight it down with a book or a brick overnight. The white, make sure you use white towels. We, we stress, we can't stress that enough because if you use a colored one, red, green, something, it could transfer that dye from the towels into the fibers and then you'd have a whole new set of issues. But if you use a white, white towel stacked up, maybe four to six deep, weight it down evenly over that contaminated area. When the contamination goes in, when the urine goes in, it's from the top side down. When carpet dries, it always dries from the bottom up. So it's a reverse of how it went in. It went down this way, and now it's drying up this way. And the last point of entry, the last area that will receive that moisture, that decontaminated moisture, are those white towels. So it's going to wick up into those white towels. Pretty cool, huh? All right, so this video is getting a little bit longer than I had hoped. However, this is a question that gets asked often that, you know, we've used stained foo or we've used another product or whatever, and we just can't quite get the stain out, the odor out. We've tried and tried and it's still there. Well, just know that first of all, you have to use the right tool, and that's this. Stain foo is a premium grade decontaminant made for specifically for urine, feces, vomit, hairballs, coffee, tea, wine, almost, well, anything organic. If it was once living or came from a living animal or human, stain foo is specifically designed to remove those kind of stains. Urine, not a problem at all. That's what it's designed for. All right, so the next thing you need is a technique, and that's the techniques I just showed you, whether you're going to just blot it up or you're going to stack up towels, make sure you use enough stain foo to fully penetrate all levels of contamination. Otherwise, you will not remove that source and you will not be as successful as you should be. All right, wrapping it up now. Thanks again and have a great day.